Hey, breaking news, ladies and gentlemen. Jill Stein announces third party bid for president. Miss Stein will seek the Green Party nomination. A spokesman said her last two campaigns with the party were unsuccessful. This is sad. How bad do RFK Jr. and Cornell West have to be doing for Jill Stein to think she has a shot? Am I right? <laughs> but America loves familiarity. We love seeing our favorite old faces from before over and over and over and over and effing over again. Nothing we want more than someone we rejected multiple times popping up again like a whack-a-mole. Anyway, uh, here, do you want to see her video? Here's, here's her video. People are tired of being thrown under the bus by wealthy elites and their bought politicians. Tired of living paycheck to paycheck, struggling to pay the rent, locked in student debt and medical debt, child poverty doubling, rising diseases of despair, growing hopelessness. The political system is broken. The two Wall Street parties are bought and paid for. Over 60% of us now say the bipartisan establishments failed us, and we need a party that serves the people. I'm Jill Stein, and I'm running for president to offer that choice for the people outside of the failed two-party system. We'll put solutions to the crises we face, crushing inequality, endless war, and climate collapse. And we'll put these front and center in this election and on the ballot across the country. The ruling parties that got us into this mess aren't getting us out. Both parties are squandering trillions on the endless war machine, fueling conflict around the world, while tens of millions here at home lack food, housing, health care. Democrats have betrayed their promises for working people, youth, and the climate again and again, while Republicans don't even make such promises in the first place. And both parties are a danger to our democracy, expanding censorship, criminalizing protest, throwing competitors off the ballot, suppressing debates, rigging their primaries. So forget the pundits and the attack dogs who tell you to ignore your misery and just keep voting for those who caused it in the first place. Change won't come from the ruling elites. It comes from we, the people. And when we stand together, we can create living wage jobs for all Americans. We can guarantee an economic bill of rights with the right to a job, to health care, to housing, to food, education, and more. We can abolish student debt, medical debt, we can create a Green New Deal with millions of jobs to fight climate collapse and protect Mother Earth. And we can ensure our constitutional rights and freedoms and justice for all. We can end the endless wars and rampant militarism and use diplomacy and international law instead to end violence, occupation, and apartheid. We do have the power, and we can use it in this election to start building an America and a world that works for all of us. Go to JillStein2024.com and join us. So now, uh, just like in 2016, I agree with everything she's saying, and I think she has probably the best platform of anybody running. Uh, all, um, although she doesn't mention COVID at all, she doesn't mention forced medical treatments. She doesn't mention lockdowns that crushed 41% of black owned businesses. She doesn't mention any. So that it's like, they're just memory holing that because they were on board for that a hundred percent. And uh, even though the black caucus inside the green party came out strongly against mandates and said it was the issue of our time. And when I brought that up to the former green party candidate, uh, 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 Cornell West, uh, he dismissed it and said it's not that important to him, and um, which was very revealing. Uh, he went out of his way to uh, pick a fight with me at the end of our interview. <laughs> um, so uh, now my first question is, who's going to be her campaign manager? 
That's my first question. Who's going to be her campaign manager, right? Because she got she got Peter Dow, the infiltrator, the smear merchant, the snake in the grass, the smear merchant for hire, right from the Clinton camp foundation and the Clinton campaign. She got him to run Cornell West campaign, and then Cornell West got him to leave the Green Party and have zero ballot access. So it looked like that was a move to uh, from an infiltrator to sabotage Cornell West campaign, which it was. And uh, so now, but we were told by Jill Stein, Jill Stein recommended Cornell West, uh, recommended Peter Dow to Cornell West. And then she pre she pretended she didn't know who his history from 2016. I know for a fact she knows that. So I know she is lying about that. And uh, so now if she doesn't pick Peter Dow and she picks someone else, we'll know she was also lying when she picked Peter Dow to run Cornell West campaign because we were told that there is nobody else available to run a campaign who's knowledgeable and has the experience to do something. So that's why they had to go with this snake in the grass, this uh, this smear merchant for hire, this guy with absolutely no integrity, these the bottom feeder scum of the earth, Peter Dow. And so if she does, if she picks someone else, well, then that will be she's revealing she was lying. And um, and if she does pick Peter Dow, <laughs> I don't think I'll ever stop laughing. Um, now, I invited her. Uh -huh. I invited her on to the to I invited her on to this show and I asked her who her campaign manager is. Now, if you if you see this is from November 2nd, 2016 into a 2016 campaign, I was the only one standing up for Jill Stein. I was the only one. Everybody else was was slandering her, including John Oliver, uh, on regular. Uh, and, that's when I stopped watching him. And I brought I brought her on, and I gave her a a, a nice interview and platform. I let her, and uh, I I voted for her. And uh, so since then, uh, she ever since Cornell West started to run with the Greens, she's frozen me out. She she it doesn't return my emails, doesn't talk to me. And doesn't have anything to say. Um, so here, just look what she look what she said. She says, hey, Jimmy, thanks for the words of support. Wondering if you'd be at all comfortable in an endorsement or official statement of support. If you're not comfortable with that, then that's perfectly fine. But let us know. That's Brendan. That's Jill's staff. Right. So since then, she is uh, she's DM'd me and Ron Placone. She thinks Ron Placone still works for the show. And so, uh -huh. so I guess I should have showed some of those. But so she's been DMing me directly. Uh, and uh, and then when Cornell West came on, she said, uh, 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 hey, Cornell West is on, was running. And uh, I said, hey, I'd like to help. I'd like to help him with um, his messaging. I'd like to write ca help write campaign speeches. And I'd also like to do fundraising for him. I could do some events, right? I could I sell tickets. We could do some fundraising events. Uh, silence back on all of that stuff. And um, so I invite here. Here I am inviting her on the show. Hey, let me know when you can come on to promote your campaign. And who's your campaign manager? Silence. So um, let me bring in the do dissidents boys. Uh, what do you make of this? I make uh, of it that I guess we're the backup to Jill Stein. I guess she was supposed yeah. to be on today. <laughs> we're, we're the understudy for Jill Stein. That's what I make of it. Uh, no, I mean, look, um, seven years ago, we'd have all been very excited by that messaging. By now, we've heard it a million times, right? And I think it's such a missed opportunity for the Green Party. It just shows how unserious an organization they are. Like, we're heading into an election cycle where you're going to have literally two failed presidents head to head, Trump and Biden. This creates as you know unique an opportunity for a third party candidate as it could ever hope for. Whoever's running third party can say, we've literally tried both of these presidents before. They have both failed. And here we are. And this was an opportunity for third parties to recruit stars who had big name ID, who could make a big splash, perhaps get them over that 5% line. They had Cornell. It didn't work out for whatever reason. It's still pretty unclear to me exactly how that fell apart, uh, but just an absolute disaster for them nonetheless. Um, and here you have now they're going to pull out Jill Stein, who ran, what, 2012, 2016? All right, let Jill do it. Like, it's such a missed opportunity to find someone new and fresh and exciting, like a Jesse Ventura type, or even Cornell S, for all his faults, had the name ID to perhaps make some sort of impact in the polls to cause chaos in November of next year, 
They couldn't make it happen. So now they're just going to like the basically the Hillary Clinton of the Greens. Right. Once she announces everybody's going to clear out, there's going to be no contest. It'll be her again. And she'll get, you know, she may get one and a half to two points. And that'll be that. Uh, I, I believe in synchronicities, and I don't think it's an accident that you have the Rolling Stones, Iron Maiden, and Jill Biden all doing a farewell tour in 2024. <laughs> it's, 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 it's just all too perfect. Uh, that just sounded like her doing her greatest hits. Yeah, Green New Deal and the two parties right. and not doing anything for us. Part of the problem with the Cornell campaign for the Green Party was I think a lot of us did not know very much about the Green Party. We just saw Jill Stein out there running. It trolled the libs and okay, fine. We Once you start really peeling back the layers on the Green Party, it's it's just not a serious organization. Yes. I, I don't think Cornell benefited them in terms of their image. I, I would agree. The more you find out about the Green Party, they're more of an LGBTQIA2 plus organization that dabbles in environmentalism. And right. it was funny, even in that video, they showed her jobs program would be putting solar panels on top of houses. Now, I used to think that was the greatest idea until I saw Michael Moore's produced movie. And right. it turns out there's a bigger carbon footprint with that kind of thing right. than you realize. And... Right. uh so I, I would really love the opportunity to talk to her about this. I don't think she's going to give it to me, um, <laughs> uh, even though I was the only you know, because they, she doesn't want, want a fair interview because <laughs> right. that's what I would give her a fair interview. And I know something about it. So she's going to go to a bunch of sycophantic. Uh, this is my prediction anyway. And I'd love her to prove me wrong. I would love well, to see be if she can make it on Monday. If she says no, just, you know, call us. Okay. <laughs> we'll be around. We'll be around. <laughs> Good nothing what, going do, on. What, what, what do we have to do? And, <laughs> and I just want to remind everybody that I'll be at the uh, Flappers Comedy Club in Burbank the day after Thanksgiving. So uh, go get jimmydoor.com, get your tickets. Uh, live stand up comedy show the day after Thanksgiving in Burbank. It's going to be fun. Um, so uh, you're problematic, Jimmy. That's what it is. Yeah, I'm problematic because I actually uh, I know what's going on and and not that I'm some kind of a genius. It's just that it doesn't take a genius to see what's going on. And so uh, how are the, the, the Green Party has been infiltrated by the FBI and the CIA, one or the other. And that's why they had Howie Hawkins run in 2020. And Howie Hawkins was a Russia gator. The Green Parties were Russia gators. The Green Parties were for COVID. They for lockdowns. They were Fauci was their uh, was their king and their savior. And uh, they're, uh, uh, you know, I don't want to I don't want to insult them in in a, in a in a schoolyard way, uh, but it was they're really a mindless organization, and. Um, and this is just what this this is just proving it. Um, and so but I would, I, you know, again, I'll bring her on the show if she likes to come on and I'll give her this platform. We get uh, somewhere around uh, 22 million views a month uh, with Rumble and YouTube combined. And so this would certainly be one of the uh, a good a, a good platform for her. And I will give her all the time she wanted to talk. And she couldn't come on the show enough back in 2016 when she was running. And uh but uh, how, how Howie Hawkins was was the final proof that that in, in that organization has been infiltrated through and through, just like the DSA. Uh, they've been infiltrated, and Howie Hawkins might as well work for the CIA if he's not. I mean, he might be just he might be like Junk Uger, just dumb enough to do it for free. Um, <laughs> uh, repeat the uh, military industrial complex talking points, lock, stock, and barrel. And they're not going to ever own up to the fact that their Russia gating led to the war in Ukraine and that or, or contributed to it because that's what Russia gate was there. It was there to lay the groundwork for people to have to connect Donald Trump, their hatred for Donald Trump with Vladimir Putin. And so then when we wanted to go and do a proxy war against Russia and Ukraine, that everybody who hated Donald Trump would be for it. And uh, and Howie Hawkins was, uh, uh, you know, the the guy grew up in San Francisco and he's and he sounds uh, he so, he sounds like Bull Connor uh, the way he talks yeah. right he's he's yeah, got he an does. accent and yeah, he doesn't he has that he's yeah. folksy and he does no, no he has like a he has a southern he has accent. a southern he's, accent he sounds yeah, like he sounds he's, like a southerner he sounds yeah. like he's from New Orleans 
I'm, yeah. I'm not kidding. And I'm and I'm like, where do where do you get where do you pick up an accent like that in San Francisco? So he there's he, multiple problems with Howie Hawkins, and uh, he he was repeating CIA talking points left, right, and center, and uh, so that organization is infiltrated, and they're just a cosplay organization, much like Code Pink. Um, that, and, that's how it and, seems. And the DSA, and that's why we and this is why we can't have anything nice on the left. This is why we can't. Well, yeah, have, it definitely feels like. It definitely felt to me, and I said this in response to your interview with Cornell, it definitely felt like he was trying to please the Green Party brass by giving you a hard time. It's, it played to me right. like the Green Party right. thought you were problematic because you're skeptical about solar panels <laughs> and, and COVID stuff. And they said, you know, this Jimmy Dore is not someone we're thrilled uh, that you're going on with. And so, you know, don't don't be too nice because I've never – seen in my life and i've been following politics for you know since i was you know 14 years old i mean you know over 20 he had years now. a grasshopper uh yeah i've never seen a, a a candidate for office pick a fight with an interviewer at the end of an interview like when you have an opportunity to leave on good terms you always take it no matter how tough the interview was you always take it you don't at the last minute when you know you got to go in two minutes because cornell said he had to go you don't at the last minute pick a fight and intentionally turned what could have been, you know, a good ending into what it was. You don't do that unless you went in knowing that uh, you had people to please at the organization who weren't happy that you were here to begin with. And that's the way it read to me. And that's exactly why Cornell West waited three months to come on the show. He did everybody else's show and their brothers before he came on this show, which is a much bigger platform. And when he came on, he came on. Well, his his gun was cocked, loaded and ready. And uh, he was picking a fight and, you know, he just embarrassed himself. He pretended to not see the connection between Stop Cop City being pro prosecuted with the same RICO statute and the same grand jury as Donald Trump was being prosecuted. He pretended. Right. And when I brought that up to him and I said, now you see the game they're playing, right? I totally expected him to say yes. I really did. I was blindsided when he called. He said, what are you? Sounds like you're a Trumper. He said something to that effect. Yeah, I he was, said, oh, well, I'm not in solidarity with Trump. As if that's the point. And, and, he, ah, and yeah. It, yeah, he said that. And then he also said, it sounds like you like Trump or something like that. Yeah, you like it sounds like you like Trump more than you're letting on or something like that. Yes, that's, that, yeah. that's what he said. Yeah, and right. so that was that, that was Cornell West pretending to be uh, dumber than a pothead comedian. And luckily, I, you know, uh, uh, I'm not as dumb as a Harvard professor. And uh, so if he honestly didn't see the connection to that, wow. What what a reveal on how bad of a, 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 a detective he is. And but I think he does see the connection, but he doesn't have the courage to say it. He doesn't have the courage to, to stand up for the against the prosecution of Donald Trump by the establishment. He just doesn't have that kind of courage. So he doesn't have the courage to run for president. And that's why he, he's not running for president. And I said that after that interview, I called the guys over at the um, uh what are they called the Fred Hampton leftist. What are they called oh, now? Uh, Black Revolutionary Black 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 Yeah, I called those guys and I said, <laughs> I don't know what Cornell West is doing, but it's obvious from my interview. He's not running for president because he didn't come on my show trying to get my right. vote, and he didn't come on my show trying to get the people who watch this show's vote. He was uh, he was virtue signaling and picking fights and playing dumb, pretending he was a moron. That was him. Well, he doesn't doing go it. on with RBN now either. He was going on with them regularly. He was. Every I, couple know, of weeks. I noticed. Well, now that they, stopped. Yeah. Yeah. He goes on shows. Them. He goes on shows with people who are on the wrong side of force to vote and pretends like they have courage and and integrity. And then he picks Peter Dow. So Cornell West is uh, re really did himself a disservice in this. Uh, he should have never ran for president. We would have all still liked him. Now he revealed right. he's just. A, He's he's not what we thought he was. I'm trying to be as nice as possible, but uh, it uh, turns well, out he's another he's another self dealing, uh, double talking, uh, smear smear. He's tried to smear me on my own goddamn show. So uh, well, what what I'm trying to help him. I was legit. I was trying to help him. So anyway, the Green Party, uh, Jill Stein, you're welcome on the show anytime you want. I don't expect her to come on. Uh, because uh, the last thing they want is to be confronted on their bullshit. No, nope, nobody wants to be confronted on their bullshit, and she doesn't have any answers for it. She doesn't. She doesn't have an answer for Peter Dow. She. She. You, you really think that you're going to come on here and the people who watch the show are going to pretend that you don't know that Peter Dow was one of the chief smear merchants of not, of you in 2016? So right. uh, and so now this is just. Uh, I think it's just another waste of time, and uh, the. 
you know, what, what we really need is activism. Uh, we need workers to come together. We need like what the, the UAW and Sinn Fein did in uh, Detroit. Uh, we need that kind of. Why well, don't know? I wish the UAW would start their own political party. Uh, because well, that, what we, we showed we showed a clip today that would 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 uh, would bring a tear to your eye, Jimmy. You mean in a bad um, way? Yeah, yeah. Was, no, uh, they uh, there was a Free Palestine protester that shouted down Biden when he was speaking at a UAW event. And the UAW workers all told the protesters, shut up, yeah, shut I up. Yeah, I saw that they, video. Yeah. Yeah, I saw yeah. that video. That was at a UAW yeah. event? I didn't know that. It yeah. Was a UAW he was speaking event. at a plant that I guess would have been closed were it not for the new deal they brokered. And so, yeah, he went there and, yeah, they shouted down the Free Palestine uh, protester. They, they, you know what? Uh, they'd still be better than the Greens. Uh, I, well, yes. That is a leper with the most They, they, they actually thing. stood up. They actually stood up to the establishment and they won. So they did. and they did uh, so well, he, but you know what was interesting? Chris Smalls is tweeting out solidarity with Palestinians. The Starbucks worker, uh oh, is that's no conflicts good. with corporate because they're standing up for the Palestinians. So these younger new line unions are aligning with Palestine and the United Autos worker. It's a it's a much older legacy union. And um, I mean, I'd be it, that that event isn't necessarily reflective of what all the union members think. It was the people who were in right. a room with Joe, with Joe Biden. If you're going to show right. if you're a union member and you're going to show up to listen to Joe Biden speak, uh, right. uh, maybe it, it's got to be for the free coffee because <laughs> be, because Joe Biden is as anti-union as they come. That's true. And he just crushed he, he crushed that railroad strike. He did. He implemented actual fascism along with the Democrats. And that's another thing that Cornell West pretended was a half that Joe Biden was somehow not a fact. He's still treating out ne that he's a neoliberal milk toast, even as he is, is enabling genocide at Palestine. Yeah. Cornell yeah, West toast. is still milk playing toast. those stupid fucking word games. He's still playing those stupid fucking word games. And, yeah. you know, Baby's I'm, the, I'm supposed he's, he says that's milk toast. I'm supposed to be the professional clown, Cornell. But he's yeah. really giving me a run for my money. Okay, let's well, go. It's, Let it's, me... a, it's a sweet gig being the establishment's pet radical. <laughs> being an actual radical doesn't pay as well. That's right. He's not an actual. Turns out Cornell's not an actual radical. Certainly, it's not that hard to be the most radical professor at Harvard, right? And right. he's lived in ivory towers his, his most of his life. I haven't. I've been knocking, banging my head against a blue collar wall up into uh, for my entire life, my entire existence. Right. I grew up drinking powdered milk and wearing hand me downs and didn't have my own pair of shoes until I was in high school. So anyway, the whole thing, um, uh, I'll, I'll put my bonus. So, and, and then it gets revealed. It gets revealed in times uh, in, in when, when it actually when the, where the rubber meets the road, Cornell failed. And so does the Green Party. Let's bring in a vagina person who, uh, what do you have to say about Jill Stein? Anything? Oh, uh, with my vagina? Yes. Oh, well, I, I'm all for it. Well, today is Fancy Vagina Friday, Jimmy. That's so, right. So, of course, you know, I'm all for it. I, you know, when I first saw I Jill didn't know Stein. That. <laughs> yes, it is, fellas. That's why you're here. And, you know, yeah, when. You better go buy something before the <laughs> wife gets home. That's what I'm saying. My wife is going to be home in two hours. It's Fancy Vagina Friday. I have nothing to give her. Yeah. You, well, and you now I can't figure, leave. You better I'm figure here. it yeah, out. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll send you a market. <laughs> all right. All right. So, I, you know, as far as Jill Stein goes, of course, you know, I, I want to know who her campaign manager is. Yeah, Who I mean that—that's the real the real question because I think it would be great if it actually turns out to be Peter Dow. That would be—I will never stop right? laughing. You're like, wow. Of course, who else could it be? Because he already wrecked Marianne's campaign, wrecked Wes's campaign. He's doing exactly what he's supposed to be doing. But I hope he—I hope he's taking care of his health. Hey, we're doing stand-up comedy in Covina, California, Burbank, California, the day after Thanksgiving, Oxnard, California, Venice, California, Palmdale, California, lots of places in the Southland. Uh, Omaha, Nebraska. We're going to be in Omaha. We're going to be in Des Moines, Milwaukee, Lansing, Bend, Oregon, Portland, Oregon, and Seattle, Washington. Plus, we're going to be in Boston, the Wilbur Theater in Boston. See you there. Mm -hmm.